Um, welcome to our October BYOB book chat. So some of my fellow library employees and I are super excited to tell you about some of the books that we have been reading that we've enjoyed. Um, we'd also love to hear from those of you in the audience if you have any questions or comments about what we're talking about. Um, you can put those in the chat. We'd also love to hear about what you're reading and we'll read those out at the end of the night if you'd like to share with us. So tonight you're going to be hearing from Brenna, that's me, Denisa, Kathy, and Tom. So I'm gonna get us started with our first book. It is The Switch by Beth O'Leary. And this was just a super fun romance. It's set in England. And there are two main characters, Lena and Eileen. And Lena is a 20 something workaholic and Eileen is a divorcee in her seventies. It's Lena's grandma. And they decided that they're just gonna swap places. So Lena goes to live in the countryside in her grandma's rural cottage. And her grandma moves into her flat in London with all of her roommates. And they have all sorts of adventures. Um, Eileen starts online dating, which is always an adventure. And Lena gets involved in the kind of small town politics. Um, there is some romantic stuff going on, but really at the heart of it, it's a story about families and um, kind of part of the backstory is that Lena's sister had passed away like a year or two before all this happened. So it's about um, grief and healing and forgiveness. Um, but despite all that, it's really not a sad story. It's really um, kind of uplifting and fun. If you liked Evie Drake Starts Over or Eleanor Oliphant, this might be one that you would enjoy. So once again, that is The Switch by Beth O'Leary. Okay, this is Three Dark Crowns by Kendare Blake. When Kingdom Come, There Will Be One. This is a young adult a middle school fantasy read. Uh, in this world of Fenburn, it is a matri matriarchal society. Every generation, triplets are born, all girls. Until they're seven years old, they're raised together. Then each are whisked away to different parts of the kingdom to be trained. One to be a poisoner, so learning all about chemicals and deceit. One to be a naturalist, studying the ways of life and eventually having a familiar. And the third to be an elementalist, using magic with fire, water, earth, and air. When all three become teenagers, they meet each other once again after six years. They have a party or two, then they fight to the death. One will be the victor. She in turn becomes the queen, gives birth to triplets, and it starts all over again. But clearly something different is gonna happen with this new round of triplets. This is some of the best world building I've ever read. The last page made me gasp out loud. I haven't done that in a while. Uh, you don't have to worry. All five books are out. You don't have to wait at all for, for a year or two for the books to come out. I uh, highly recommend this, really good. Hello. We can hear you. You can hear me. <laughs> Hi, uh, I feel like I'm promoting Audur Ava Ola's daughter tonight. I'm gonna talk about three of her six books. I discovered her by an accident and I was really um, interested because there are not many people living in Iceland and I think I have ever met just one person, one Icelandic person. So in reading about Iceland, I, I just really wanted to read her book. And so this one is probably, I don't know, they are all very different, which is kind of unique because once you start reading books by certain author, you find out that the style is very similar and sometimes you get bored. It probably won't happen with Audrey Ava Olaf's daughter because every single of her book is a different story and different style. Butterflies in November is a book that, that will make you dizzy. She jumps from uh, place to place. She, it's like a free association thought process. Uh, the heroine of the book doesn't have a name. Uh, she's a feminist. She speaks 12 languages. She does what she pleases. She doesn't care what people think about her. And then one day she finds out that she got dumped by her husband. 
uh, she got stuck with a deaf son of her best friend and she decides to go on a road trip around Iceland, which is pretty, it's literally around because there is a wandering road that um, goes around the island and you pretty much end up where you started. And on that road trip, she, uh, her ex-boyfriends uh, appear from out from nowhere. She um, encounters many strangers and by spending time with uh, two made a little boy and having time to think about her marriage, her friendships, her life, I think she ends up being a little bit different person by the end of her journey than when she started it. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So our next book is Girls Burn Brighter by Shoba Rao. And this is definitely a book that deals with some heavy themes, but it's super, super well-written and very interesting. Um, it's set in India, and it's about these two girls that are best friends when they're kids. Um, and then as they grow up, one of them is kind of forced into an arranged marriage, and the other one runs away from home. Um, and they just encounter a whole lot of challenges in their life. But um, they both end up going to America at a certain point, and they just spend years trying to find each other because they were so close. Um, and it does deal with some, uh, with some themes of the mistreatment of girls and women in India, um, arranged marriage, sex trafficking. So definitely a lot of heavy stuff, but I learned a whole lot reading this book. Um, it definitely put a personal spin on some of these bigger issues. Um, if you're a fan of international fiction, women's friendships, overcoming hardships, anything like that, it's also a great read for book clubs. I would highly recommend it. It is Girls Burn Brighter by Shoba Rao. Okay, ch changing gears. This is Captain Raptor and the Space Pirates by Kevin O'Malley and Patrick O'Brien. This is a juvenile graphic novel and I'll read just a little bit. Okay. In the misty skies above the planet Jurassica, a dark and sinister shape is seen moving among the clouds. Suddenly, boom, a cannon roars overhead. In the fire and smoke, the pirate ship Black Rot descends to the ground. The hatch flies open, and a mob of misshapen mutants and reptilian cyborgs flow like a river out of the ship, screaming and shouting and waving their laser swords. The citizens of Jurassica are in a panic as the space pirates raid the Imperial Palace. So the palace gets, uh, st uh, well, in the palace, there is a jewel. It gets stolen, and the president asks Captain Raptor to assemble his fearless crew. There's Professor Angelopterus, the master engineer, Sergeant Brick Thoris, weapons, weapons specialist, and Lieutenant Three-Toe, ace pilot. Uh, this is, it's such a fun read. I mean, it's, it has dinosaurs in outer space who fly spaceships, and some of them are cyborgs. At first, I was thinking, why wasn't this around when I was a kid? But, you know, I'm just a big kid who pays bills. So I, I just love this book. I think this is perfect to read uh, right, before, right before bedtime. So again, this is Captain Raptor and the Space Pirates. Captain mm, Silence is, um, it starts, I like a sad book. It's sad. It's about a middle-aged guy who kind of thinks that there is no reason for him to continue living. His wife left him. His daughter is becoming a stranger. His mom's dementia progressing and he decides one day that he will just buy a one-way ticket and uh, will go somewhere where nobody knows him and when no, no one who loves him can find him and commit suicide by hanging himself. So he ends up in this uh, post-war country. We don't know which one out of the European post-war or Middle Eastern post-war country it is. Uh, this is toolbox and um, he finds slowly little by little by looking around himself listening to life stories and realizing that 
people who lost everything are trying so hard to carry on living by maintaining the hotel and fixing and doing what he loves to do and what he is good at, um, a new reason to live. Um, it's a book about little things and um, unimportant characters, but I think it's really, you can really relate to uh, people's depression in that book, people, people's lack of um, reason to live and realize that, that that is that little little things are enough for you to find a new spirit in yourself and will to continue living it was a very touching book okay so 19 minutes by Jodi Picoult uh, it's a bit of an older read came out in March of 2007 so it turned 13 this year um, before I go any further, I'm just going to issue a general trigger warning because it has to do with bullying and a high school shooting. So if anyone has issues with that, now is a good time to turn your sound off. Um, so moving forward, it's set in Sterling, New Hampshire in March of 2007. And there are so many characters, as Jody Bicole likes to do. Um, but I think there's only four who you really get down into, and only four I personally care about, if I'm being entirely honest. And those are Peter, Lacey, Josie, and Alex. Um, Peter is a 17-year-old junior at Sterling High School. He's been bullied every day of his life since he was his first day of kindergarten. Um, he's very vulnerable, very emotional, very sensitive, which makes him a target for bullying. And he ends up being the shooter at the high school, sad as that is. Lacey is Peter's mom, and she's a midwife, which is all you really need to know about her for the purposes of, the purposes of this book chat. Um, and she and the character Alex are close, um, or they used to be. Alex is a superior court judge uh, who is young, as far as judges are considered. She's only 40. She's a single mom. In fact, her child, uh, she birthed with Lacey's help. Lacey was her midwife. And her child, Josie, character number four, um, is Peter's age, um, same year in high school. Um, yeah. And then there's two characters who I consider as supporting. Um, and they're recurring. They were in other Jody Picoult books. Jordan McPhee, who's a defense lawyer, and Patrick Ducharme, who's a detective. So you may recognize them for the other books they were in by Jody Picoult. Um, as for the narrative, um, it starts as Lacey and Alex have known each other for about 17 years, their kids' ages, um, when Alex first attended one of Lacey's prenatal classes when she was pregnant with Josie. And since Alex was already a single, going into this, she knew she was going to be a single mom. So Lacey became her support system and that really bound the women together. Now their kids, Josie and Peter, were best friends until um, around age five when something happened that I will not go into because of spoilers. And because of that, they weren't allowed to see each other outside of school. Then in middle school, they really drifted apart because popularity and cliques took over the social dynamics. And Josie chose that over being seen with Peter, the perpetual outcast, which further isolated him. And well, we all see what happened there. Um, so why do I like this book? I mean, it's clearly not Sunshine and Rainbows. Well, it came out in 2007, so the pop culture and technology is different from now, which I really like, I like that nostalgia. There's no social media except for email, if you count that. Um, it shows that social dynamics never really change um, from elementary school all the way through adulthood because you still have bullies in the workplace, you still have social outcasts in the workplace. We just deal with it differently as we age. Uh, and possibly my favorite part of the book, the reason I reread it, is you get to see the shooter as a dynamic, complex person. He's not just the shooter, um, which doesn't excuse what he did at all. Um, but 
it really show Jody Picoult really shows the gray in that situation. So if you're someone who likes to see the gray areas in tragedies like that, I recommend it. All right, our next book is When Stars Are Scattered by Victoria Jameson and Omar Mohammed. Um, this is a graphic novel that I just absolutely loved. Um, I read it all in one day, like a rainy Saturday afternoon, curled up in a blanket. I just read the whole thing in one sitting. And it's a graphic memoir. Um, so it's the story of Omar Mohammed. Uh, Victoria Jameson did the illustrations. And he grew up in a refugee camp after he was displaced from some fighting in Somalia. Um, so his father was unfortunately killed in the violence. He was separated from his mother. So it's just him and his younger brother, Hassan, um, who has a disability due to some of the malnutrition that they faced when they were younger. And so his main thing is, I'm, I'm going to take care of my brother and I'm going to make sure that we're doing okay. Um, and he really wants to get out of the refugee camp, of course. So he goes to school and studies really hard and does everything he can to um, improve their lives. And this was I think what I enjoyed about this so much is that it really puts you in the mindset of what it would be like to grow up in a refugee camp. Um, there's so much waiting. Um, some people are born there and die there just trying to get back to their home village or trying to emigrate to a different country. Um, and you see that here, he's waiting to find out if he's going to be able to emigrate to the United States. And he's waiting to see if his mom shows up at the camp, they go and wait with the new arrivals every day and see if she's there. Um, so it's a super moving story. It's very redemptive. Um, I love that it's based on a true story that made it all the more moving. Um, you're just cheering for these boys to succeed the whole time. Um, it's, I believe it's for written kind of for a middle school or high school audience. Um, there is not a ton of violence, but it does refer to his father being killed. So, I mean, for a younger audience, it might be a little bit rough. I also think it's great for adults, um, or if you were looking for something to read with some of your older children, it would also be good for that. So that is When Stars Are Scattered by Victoria Jameson and Omar Mohammed. Okay, this is Rosemary and Rue by Shannon McGuire. This is adult fantasy. If you're a fan of the Harry Dresden books by Jim Butcher, this might be up your alley. October Day, who goes by Toby, is a private investigator in San Francisco. Her cases sometimes delve into the unusual as she is half human, half fae. Her mother is of the fairy world. The magic that Toby wields is limited as her human side taints her fae side. When she's on a case, something horrific happens and her world is torn apart. Desperate to find answers who, uh, to who has wronged her, she's thrust onto another case by a dying liege and she has to solve this murder or she'll die and time is running out. Uh, this is such a comfort read for me. Ever since I discovered this years ago, I read this about once a year. I just, I, the world building is, is just great. It's funny, uh, but the magic, and I like it when magic is limited. I mean, yet we've all seen, you know, magic, wave a wand, and there's no consequences. But with Toby, she has consequences when she uses too much of her magic. And I just found that actually real. Uh, this is a great, it's a great murder mystery su suspense with a huge fantasy dose. So again, this is Rosemary and Rue by Shannon McGuire. I read another book by that author. She writes under a few different names. So the yes. one that I read was under Myra Grant, but it's the same person. But it was about uh, killer mermaids who lived above the Mariana Trench and this like research group that goes out to like find out more about them and it doesn't go well, but uh, she's really great for sci-fi horror type of stuff. Yeah, Brenna, I actually, I actually read that as well. Yeah, um, and she also wrote, yeah, under that name, she wrote an a uh, book based uh, if in the Alien universe called uh, I think Alien Echo, and I didn't know until afterwards, like, oh wait, she writes under a different name. Mm -hmm. I think she's a real, she's a really talented writer. Yeah, yeah, she's a lot of fun. Okay, me again, back to Iceland. Uh, this time, um, uh, the book is set in the 60s, 1960s. Um, the main character is called Hekla, her father who is obsessed with volcanoes, like um, obviously there is a lot of volcanoes in Iceland. He named her after one of the biggest volcanoes. 
Uh, she is a writer, but she writes under a male name. And after her mom dies, she decides to uh, move to Reykjavik, to the capital, and try to pursue a career as a professional writer. Uh, it doesn't go as she imagined. Uh, she finds the society of the 1960s is uh, pretty sexist and homophobic. She has a best friend who is a homosexual. Uh, they share an apartment and they share, they bond over their differences. And uh, by, it's called Miss Iceland. Uh, it's like, it's a joke because she's pretty, Hekla is pretty, and the, the male-dominated society, they, there are many uh, males in Reykjavik she uh, encounters who would rather see her contesting uh, in Miss Iceland um, competition than writing books. So one day, Jan and Hekla decide that enough has been enough, and they leave Iceland and go and move to Europe to try to uh, pursue whatever they think they should achieve in their life there. Um, I think it may be, it, the book might be a little bit autobiographic since um, Audur Ava, Olaf's daughter, she left Iceland and went to study in Paris. Um, I wonder. Yeah, it's, uh, as I said, every single book is different. Every single book has its own character trying to be happy. Have a good night, everybody. Okay, back to me. So, Once and for All by Sarah Destin, drastically different from 19 Minutes by Jodi Picoult. Uh, it was published in June of 2017. Um, I could, I, when I Look through it over the weekend. I could not find the exact setting. All I know is that it's set during the summer. So there you go, during the summer. Um, our protagonist is a young lady named Luna, who's 18, and she works for her mom and godfather's wedding planning business. Now, Luna had been cynical about love because she has a single mom. And despite running a wedding planning business, her mom and godfather are... They don't believe true love really exists. They've been very jaded and working in their industry, they've seen a blow up a lot. So she grew up with that mindset. Um, but her idea of love changed the summer previous to the time of this book when she met her first love. And then when that tragically ended, she decided she was done with dating at least for a few years. Um, choosing to be like her mom and godfather, who also see dating as pointless. <laughs> uh, they purposely only date people that they know they have no future with, which is not healthy, but it's what Luna grew up with. Um, then enter a dude named Ambrose, who is around Luna's age, and he is the exact opposite, where Luna has only ever dated one guy seriously, and Ambrose is a happy-go-lucky serial dater. Who reminds her that dating doesn't have to be serious. You can't just date people like a different person every day of the week and it's fine. So, of course, they make a bet where Luna has to be a serial dater for a specific amount of time. And during that same time, Ambrose has to date only one girl. So, of course, you can probably see how this gets very interesting and amusing very quickly. Um, now, why do I like this book? I love Sarah Dessen. I've loved just about every book of hers that I've read. Um, she always plays on that romance, um, but she also shows familial love and love between Luna and her best friend. Um, so there's, there's a lot of love happening, all kinds. Um, and it's just, it's heartwarming because you, you see, like I said, there's all this love there's hope for the future and there's weddings involved because it's a wedding planning business. So there's that. It's, it's a hug in a book. It's really comforting. Um, so I recommend it if you're looking for a more lovey-dovey comforting book. Um, so that's Once and for All by Sarah Dessen. I was a big Sarah Dessen fan in high school. She is I really good. 
All right, this is our last book of the evening. So just as a quick reminder, um, if you'd like to tell us about a book that you would recommend, you can do so in the chat now. So I'm going to tell you about Still Life by Louise Penny, uh, but really about the entire series. So this is book one in a series of 16 mystery books, and they're all about this inst inspector Armand Gamache. And they all take place in this small town called Three Pines in Quebec. And in, this, in the first one specifically, um, one of the townspeople has been murdered. So the inspector comes in and he's uh, there to find out what happened. Uh, but really the heart of these stories is just, you learn so much about this small town. Um, there's a lot of quirky, fun characters. I, I honestly think it's worth reading just for the descriptions of food because the food they eat there just sounds so amazing at this little cafe in the town. Um, and the landscapes and um, just the culture up there. It's so fun to read about, but they're also great mysteries um, and they're what would be considered cozy. So nothing terribly violent or gory happens on the page. All the murders kind of take place off the page, um, but it's, it's great. You get little clues and there's suspects and you can try and figure it out yourself as the inspector is kind of um, going through and figuring out what happened. As I said, there's 16 books in the series um, you don't necessarily have to read them in order. You'd certainly be able to figure out what was going on. But if you do, it, it helps you kind of build more knowledge of who these characters are. Um, and if you're a mystery fan and you haven't read Louise Penny yet, you absolutely have to. She's delightful. So I have not heard from anyone in the audience about what you're reading, which is totally fine. We're going to skip that. And I am going to sign us off for the night. So thank you for joining us. And thanks for to our presenters. Have a great evening.